Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So I didn't think I'd be making a video today because I was working on my video about my interview with Marsha Lewis Ryan and I'm live tonight, but I saw this article about the show that was in the LA Times and I just couldn't not say something because this article is so negative about the show that, you know, the resident L word Generation Q positive person has to say something. You know, there's a lot of people at the moment building their brand on this kind of negativity because I was talking to my good friend Evelyn about this and when we were talking about this article, you know, people who are extremely negative or extremely positive are the ones who kind of get clicks and views at the moment and clicks and views means money. So I'll talk more about this in the video, but even this, this is an example. Would I be talking about this if this article wasn't trending? And would it be trending if it wasn't so negative? Probably not. So I just wanted to go through the article. I'm gonna go about it in kind of an unusual way, not chronologically, and jump around a bit. I just really wanted to put my opinion about this out there, especially with season three kind of hanging in the balance. So I'm just gonna get right into it. This is a bit of an unusual video for me. So yeah, I don't really know what else to say that this is a bit weird for me, but I, I just had to say something. Also, I'm gonna be a little bit nitpicky because the author was so. So they start out talking about Carrie. So I'm I'm going to talk about like Carrie altogether and then go back in, into the other paragraphs. And again, nitpicky because they were, but they in the beginning they say, Carrie, a self-loathing caricature of a messy fat butch stands drunk under an umbrella held by her friends, Shane and Tess. Okay, I wouldn't describe Shane and Tess as Carrie's friends, um, which is pretty established because that's why Tina's worried about Carrie going to the thing because she's going to the thing without Tina. And at no point would I ever describe Carrie as self-loathing. I would describe her as someone who's insecure and as someone who had a extremely bad weight problem even now where I am as small fat as opposed to a big fat I still have like things in my head where I think I'm much bigger than I am and you still are that kind of person inside so I just I, I would never describe her as self-loathing. I think she's just insecure. And I think anybody's insecurity would be magnified immensely by being put up against or measured in some way against Bette Porter, who is an extremely gorgeous person, but also the, they're very rich, like in this whole like high fashion LA lesbian thing. So... Yeah, I'm not surprised Carrie's insecure. I feel like most people would be insecure, but self-loathing, no. And messy, no. When were we ever given that impression? I think that there's not a person on earth who hasn't, or like, a, you know, people who've drank that has never gone there with alcohol and had a day where they're like, oh, I, I went too far. I had too many drinks and just ended up being you know sloppy or whatever but they're describing her as like messy like in general which no and even Carrie talks about getting a new suit to go to this thing and later they describe it as like ill-fitting suit and no it it wasn't <laughs> so I'm gonna skip to the next Carrie bit and then I'll go back to the other bits and they talk about what's disappointing that Carrie, the first reoccurring fat butch character in the series history, is not written to be liked. Sorry? I mean, were there some people who didn't like Carrie because 
you know, Tina's with her and was there a small minority of people who are fat phobic or whatever you want to call it or just there's some people who just don't like Rosie O'Donnell yeah listen I know that my channel is really small but my channel is all about the L word so everyone who comes to my channel is coming for the L word to give their opinions about the L word and I have an enormous amount of people in the especially in the last month that have come to my channel like it's not that far away from a million and I would say the majority of comments Instagram whatever everywhere have been really positive about even though like maybe they don't want Tina and Carrie together that they really like Carrie and also people that I talk to way more like my friends who my co-hosts of drinks at Dana's like I know so many people who love Carrie. And I spoke to Marja Lewis Ryan, who's the showrunner for anybody who doesn't know that. I have my interview with her coming out in the next day or two. And in it, she talks about how she basically wouldn't have the show or be making this without Rosie O'Donnell because Rosie O'Donnell, she literally says this in the interview, changed her life. So. Do you think that Marja Lewis Ryan, who Rosie O'Donnell changed her life, is writing her to be unlikable? Okay, next. The author says, Carrie is using the alibi of attending Overeaters Anonymous to mask her alcoholism. D does anybody remember being given this information? Because the information that I was given was that Carrie is an exceptionally honest character even to a fault and maybe with other characters we would think this that she was hiding this but we're shown that she is an exceptionally honest person and she was going to an overeaters anonymous meeting and then next they make this like comparison where they're saying like Carrie Finley who stands in for a butch with younger guard with the younger guard why do we feel this need to like shove someone in like a box like I wouldn't describe oh I wouldn't describe Finley as a butcher or not a butch like why do we need to to call her that like I I just think I don't think that that she fits that label so why are we forcing it on her and then they talk about Finley and Carrie being in this long tradition of portraying homosexuals as sad lonely monstrous and dying lonely like Carrie is with Tina Finley last season was like with Tess and the priest and all these other people and I think that Finley has a lot of other issues but I don't think lonely is one of them she's been with Sophie that's the one thing that like has worked this season for Finley is is that she's been with Sophie and then it goes on to say that like Finley and Carrie are but again like both unlikable like I like Jess my co-host on Dreams of Dana's they're her, like her favorite people on the show like I know that there's a small amount of people who don't like Finley but again predominantly enormous amounts of people tell me how much they love Finley and if anything like feel bad for her now so so then the article goes into this bit where it's talking about how the guests made the original L word and there was all these appearances and even like talks about Betty which like okay and they talk about the guests and I, like I don't know whether the author is aware of this but there's this thing um the pandemic that's happening right now and <laughs> when they filmed this they were filming it in the pandemic and again I hate to like keep putting this in here but when I spoke to Marja on Friday she was talking about the fact that like they had to pair up so many of the main cast this season Danny and Gigi, Gigi and Bette, Tess and Shane, Finley and Sophie, 
because they couldn't have people coming in and out of the show because there's a pandemic on. So I don't think we should be really like holding the show to account for not having cool guest stars this season because there was a pandemic. Just to backtrack a bit, there is a bit where the article goes into talking about some content creators and some platforms that have you know, said negative things about the show. Like it says that one of them said like a bang, but with a deeply confusing whimper and someone else said sudden and half baked. And the people that they've chosen to quote are people that I would say, if you weighed it up and it was like, okay, every time they talk positively about the show or they talk negatively about the show, give a tick. I think that there would be, you know, predominantly a lot more negative ticks. So as I was saying at the beginning, you know, negativity and being really negative about something is very popular at the moment. It gets lots of clicks, lots of views. And although I think criticism is totally valid and we should all be able to give our opinions. I mean, I talk about things that I don't like or storylines that like aren't my favorite, but it's just this overwhelming negativity, like when it tips the scale and you're being too negative, it's not even done in a funny or clever way anymore. I mean, there was this video a little while ago that was going around and it was on TikTok, I think. And it was a woman like about my age, like early thirties. And she was saying how, this is how like every lesbian reacts when I tell them I haven't seen the L word. And she was going, oh my God, it's terrible. It's the worst thing in the world, but you have to watch it. I hate every character, but you have to see it. Um, like, that's funny. That's funny. Like, I, I love all the silly Jenny jokes and season three jokes and stuff like that. Be clever about it. Be funny. Don't just be negative, negative, negative. And again, just to like mention this, you know, clicks and views are important for just exposure and your name and your brand and all that stuff. But clicks and views also mean money. And when that's all tied up in in your personal income and things like that and and I am not exempt from this like as some people who don't like me will tell you I make money from the L word I make money from this channel and you you would be really shocked how little because I spent so much time on it but I do make money from this channel and as I said you know maybe if I came on here and absolutely like trash the show and made more money maybe maybe that would change the my relationship with the show my relationship with my like content and I know there are people I've seen them on YouTube who they do something that I mean that Nick Okada guy is, ex is exactly a good example like he is doing something terrible to himself and his you know health and everything is suffering but he gets clicks and views and money. So, and I'm not saying there's any comparison there, but I just thought it was worth mentioning because the author did pick media outlets or whatever you, you know, content creators that do um, way more on the criticism rather than the praise for the show or negativity, positivity, whatever way you want to look at it. And I think it would have been a lot fairer here to either pick one of these and then pick someone who's more on the Gen Q positive side or to pick some of the people who are a lot more like down the middle and a lot more like fair in their criticism. Like I, I know that I am biased and, and I mean, everybody is biased, everybody is and but I'm like more on the positive side, but there's definite, definite YouTubers out there like my friend Evelyn Dar, who I just mentioned, Alex Shillington, um, Sapphic Underground. Those three people are way, way more unbiased and like middle of the road than me or like other people. So I think it would have been fair to use some of them. And all of those people have like at least 30,000 subscribers and are getting, you know, insane amounts of views. So 
there's definitely enough like you know people looking at their content to be referenced there's there's another section that talks a bit about like guest stars and things and they talk about Lena Waithe only being there for one episode and again like I'll say you know they were very limited on what they could do this season because of the pandemic so I, I just what what do, what do you expect them to do like I think that they were able to get Lena Waithe because she's like in the Showtime family so it was probably like a, a lot more flexible with like being able to schedule her and things and then they go into this bit about Alice and Tom and they talk about Alice and framing Tom as bumbling, smelly breaths and willing to put up with Alice's shame and indifference towards him is hardly progressive. Again, <laughs> I, I would not describe Tom this way at all. And even, even like the silly like nitpicking thing of saying smelly breath, like Tom was asking Alice the second he met her, do you have any gum? Because he so was bothered about it and wanted to change that immediately. And he did like, so he's not walking around that way. Like he fixed it. <laughs> like what? So, and bumbling, like, Tom is adorable and sweet and like I know so many people have been a fan of Donald Faison's portrayal of Tom and like I know especially there's a lot of especially younger viewers who come to my channel who absolutely love Alice and Tom and even though like Alice and Tom I wouldn't describe them as one of my favorite couples but I really like Donald Faison and I really like Tom's character so yeah I, I just don't agree with this either like I would never describe him that way either and Alice I think is way more scared of commitment and these things and I don't think it has anything to do with shame or indifference. You know that I'm not really someone who has any authority to, to talk about trans issues or trans portrayal on the show because I'm cisgender and they go into this like talking about the original portrayal which I think we all unanimously agree was terrible so why I, I don't understand why they bring it up this way and then in literally brackets they're like although there's multiple trans actors this season including both and they list like Jamie Clayton, Isis King, Sophie Gilmore and Leo Shang. Just the way this is shoved in here in brackets it, it really seems to undersell the importance of the work that Jamie, Isis, Leo and Sophia are doing on the show. I mean, they also, there's no mention whatsoever of the like groundbreaking scene that Michael was in this season with Gillian Mercado. And I mean, even the scene with Isis and Leo, like, how rare is that to see on television? But no mention of it. And then they say there are currently no gender queer or non-binary characters. Like there's only so many characters. This show cannot be everything for everyone. Like I wish that there was, you know, I don't know, maybe a Helen is back and a British person is back. Like you can sit there and say that about anything. Like there's a not, not enough blonde women on the L word. <laughs> like that sounds ridiculous, but it's easy to sit here and critique and say, this should be on it and this should be. But what the question we really should be asking is why do we only have this one goddamn show? And why is there not more queer representation and more queer characters and queer shows and queer representation in mainstream shows why do we have this one show and we should be praising the show that's getting stories out and also there is so much this season like for one Danny and Gigi being on screen speaking Farsi together like 
the people that I've spoken to in that community are insanely, insanely happy and proud and love Danny and Gigi. And I think that that should be praised. That's not even addressed once in the entire article. The words Danny and Gigi are never uttered. And then there's another thing that's not even mentioned is Bet and Pippa. Do you know how rare it is to have two black women over 50 on the screen having a sex scene on a show? That, like, tell me, please tell me another show that has that. And it's the same show that's having 30 something Persian couple representation and 50 plus black women representation couple, like, how you cannot mention Bet and Pippa and Danny and Gigi in an article about season two of Generation Q. Honestly, I'm I'm flabbergasted. I really am. I mean, there's so many things, like little things in this that I could sit here all day and, and talk about. Like, they describe the show as an update. Like, this isn't replacing the old one this is a new story this is a continuation it's it's not replacing the original and i think that when people realize that we're not saying this is the l word like this is a new show with new characters and alice bet shane tina like all the people from the original like this is new parts of their life and you know, when I look at this show, I just look at this is my community and I'm really proud of the members of my community who are in the show. And, you know, this show is made, and, and I don't mean just like Leisha and Kay and people on the screen. I mean people like the writers, the showrunner, the cinematography, like people doing the hard work behind the scenes they are, some of them are members of our community. There's predominantly, like, I, I mean, compared to a regular show, like there's a lot more queer people working on the L word. And I am really proud of this show. And is it the number one show on television? No, but is it a show that is absolutely changing lives and showing people this is what you can be like this is how you can move in the world like I would not be the person I am today and so comfortable and everything without the L word and I know that there's literally thousands of people who feel that way because they come to my channel and tell me how important the L word is to them. And that is still going on now with Generation Q. Also, any show that can elicit this reaction is doing something right. <laughs> We should be really proud of this show and we should be saying why is there not more representation not picking apart the one that we have like yes okay we can all like you should get your opinion out there and you should say i like this or i don't like that or this or i wish they changed this this way but putting out like hit pieces when the show's renewal is up in the air like and, and also like really like little digs about, you know, someone's hair being so last season or like, is, is that really the way like we want queer women should be talking about other queer women? Come on. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's some people who are really going to hate this video and, and say like, I'm being too like easy on Gen Q or whatever, but maybe 
this author and I kind of balance the world out. So I just think without Gen Q, there's going to be a lot less queer representation on television. And that is sorely, sorely needed because the people that I'm talking to behind the scenes, they need this show. Like they really, really do. And there are still people out there closeted and watching the L word in secret and they are the ones that really really need this show so if you guys agree with me you don't have to agree with me about everything but if you agree that the L word is a great show and want a third season let Showtime know leave a like on this video leave a comment telling me what you think what you think of this article Subscribe to the channel if you want <laughs> if you want to hear more two positive takes about the L word and you know just be nice to each other and you know go out and do something good today be nice to animals be good to yourself be good to others be good to our show because it's one of the only ones we've got so have a great day. Make sure to take care of yourselves and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.